My sweet suffering, all my so- Welcome back to the channel, everybody. You are very welcome to episode 42 of the Code Crown podcast, where today we are looking at episode 10 of Digimon Adventure 2020, the Solid Steel Super Evolution. Uh, this episode was okay. I guess we'll touch on my general thoughts. We'll get into the review itself, and then we'll look at a sort of some sort of my overall thoughts and opinions on where they went with it and how it looks like it's going to be shaping up. So, like, the episode was just okay. Um, I wasn't enthralled by it, but I wasn't bored by it at the very least. I thought it had enough going on and how they went about things made sense. Um, and there was some funny bits, so it wasn't overly serious. Um, but overall, it's, I, I won't grade the episode now, you'll have to wait for that, but, um, I, I think, okay, if we're starting the ultimate arc this early, this was a good way to do it. It doesn't have the, the build-up and the tension, of course, of Metal Greymon's appearance in the original anime, but when you're jumping out of the, um adult arc and going straight into the perfect arc i think that's a that's a high curve to reach because you don't have that drama and that suspense and just that build up but we'll we'll touch on that later on just yeah i, I yeah i i don't really have anything overtly negative to say about the episode but it was just it was fine so we start off with the analyzer again, and uh, per our Who's That Digimon segment, yes, it is indeed Greymon. And then they pull the stunt again with Gabumon, and I'm not making the joke again, so let's move, let's move on. Who's That Pokemon? <laughs> so, we get a, re uh, a recap of what happened last episode and that recap then turns into a recording of the battle that koshiro made which i think was a really unique way to go about it we don't see how the kids escaped after uh the explosion caused by ogremon and metal tyrannomon we don't see the escape but having the recap morph into what the kids are seeing um with koshiro analyzing the battle data I think that was really unique, and I think it was a fun way to go about that sort of transition. Um, so uh, Koshiro is analyzing Metal Tyrannomon's data um, from what he transferred at the fortress also. All he has right now, though, is the monster's name, and that's kind of funny. Um, but it's because the data is corrupted, so it's tough to sort of get a grasp on it. But they, they try to explain it. I think it's cool that they he doesn't have all the answers yet. But, um, you know, he's he's trying to make do with what he has and uh, the data being corrupted is one thing. And so all he has right now is a name to go on and then the recordings he made himself. Um, Agumon is resting. He's pretty much out cold. Gomamon tells him, like, if you just rest, you'll be fine. You'll be back to your old self soon. Tai Chi flashes back to Ogremon's sacrifice. Yamato says retreating was the best option. But the battle was a waste as they couldn't get the information they wanted from Ogremon. To which Taichi responds that it wasn't about information. It wasn't about friend or foe. Og Ogremon was fighting for pride. Uh, Yamato calls Taichi naive for making friends with an enemy. And the two nearly come to blows. And I'm just like, oh, nice to see this show upholding the Yamato as a dick tradition. So, yay. <laughs> Um, tai Chi swears to save the Holy Digimon and their city. Agumon wakes up. Uh, tai Chi embraces him. Agumon's stomach growls and the tension lifts because that's how they do things. Agumon's hungry. Everybody laugh. Um, Gomamon says Piyomon and the others will be back with food shortly. And 
Then Agumon asks about Ogremon and Taichi's head lowers. Agumon sort of takes the hint, says he wanted to finish the battle. Taichi put uh, Agumon and Taichi put their arms around each other, um, and says uh, Taichi says he did too. He wanted to finish the battle as well, and we see the Digivice pulse orange in Taichi's pocket. Piomon, Palmon, and Tentomon come back with food. Um, it was tough to gather as Soundbirdmon are everywhere. If that's fair enough. Uh, you know, and of course we have Agumon being like, Oh, a pig smell yummy! Yay! Uh, Taichi and Yamato move to the cave entrance away from everybody. Uh, Taichi says it's only a matter of time before they're found. Yamato replies that he can't agree with fighting Metal Tyrannomon without a plan as the priority is the Holy Digimon. And Taichi says, look, it's impossible. They can't avoid contact with Metal Tyrannomon. They have to face him if they need, if they want to move forward. Uh, Sora chimes in, adding that even that if even one Soundbird uh, Soundbirdmon sees them, that Metal Tyrannomon will rush over. Um, Tentamon calls for them, saying Koshiro has made a great discovery. And this is like, if it sounds like I'm moving at sort of a, a uh, as I as I do tend to put it a breakneck breakneck pace. There we go. Uh, through this, it's really because this first sort of bit is just putting tension between almost putting tension between Taichi and Yamato and their different ideals. Almost needlessly, I don't think they should be ready. The kids should be ready to come to blows internally just yet. Um. Especially with this story playing out differently to how their characters contrasted uh, in the original show, I don't think they've done enough to show how different they are for this to be, to for this to be warranted. But um, so but anyway, so yeah, Tentamon calls for them, saying Koshiro has made a great discovery. Koshiro is using his Digivice to project a map of the the continent. He uh, shares it with the others. Like, he literally, I, I swear, like, he literally swipes it from his laptop screen into the other's digivices. I'm just like, oh, well, he's adapted well to this new technology. Fair enough. <laughs> um, but it does look like there was frequent communication with the seaside fortress that they'd come from and the other locations on the map. Um what Taichi read was part of one of those transmissions and there is a chance that one of these areas is the enemy HQ which means that they should head for one of those locations on the map that the fortress was broadcasting to. Another supporting reason for this is that using the path Ogremon gave them um, it does align straight to one of those relay areas which Yamato then snarks about the information being trustworthy. I'm just like, oh, shut you, shut your mouth. <laughs> Ogremon's not even, you know, his body's not even cold, and you're just, and you, oh, sh mm, I don't like Yamato. Anyway, anyway, so yeah, so the, the path Ogremon forged for them basically does align to where the relay base is, and is likely the, the main enemy HQ. So Koshiro sends out some information about Metal Tyrannomon to Taichi's Digivice. We don't see what information yet. We then cut and see Metal Tyrannomon stomping through the forest, leaving that dark mist stuff in its wake. And it kind of reminds me of... Um, later on they call it a miasma, but it kind of reminded me of the malice from Breath of the Wild. So that was kind of what my notes had, and then later on... Kosher was like, oh, it's like a it's like a miasma. And I went, it is like a miasma. Yeah, you're right. Okay. But you know, interpretation is a fun thing. So um Yeah, so sorry, I, I lost complete track of where I was there for a second. Uh Taichi and Agumon run into the forest and Agumon fires off a baby flame. Sora looks concerned as they do. As the Soundbird Mon register the attack, we hear Taichi tell the others that the diversion is working and that he and Agumon will catch up once they've shaken the others off their trail. And we get our commercial break cut. 
back from break. Uh, tai Chi and Agumon have run into a valley outside the forest. Uh, tai wonders if it's far enough away from everyone. Metal Tyrannomon comes toward them and Agumon digivolves. I still love Be the Winners. Uh, Metal Tyrannomon fires off a laser attack which Greymon ducks and dodges through but is caught off guard uh, by Metal Tyrannomon's follow-up missile attack as they get closer to him. The straight route leads the others to a very eerie, if not evil, their words, uh, poisonous swamp. Mimi says there's no way she's going through that swamp, and Palamon says it'll be bad for her skin. <laughs> Which, I, again, I thought was one of the funnier moments. Um, there was a moment I didn't mention earlier, uh, purposely, because I, I do want to talk about it a bit, but I think that's one of the funnier moments, and it builds on... Um, one, the earlier moment that I haven't mentioned and one later on. Uh, so Koshiro starts to analyze the dark mist um, and then calls it a miasma. It's the same as Metal Tyrannomon was emitting. The group surmises that this is the usual route the enemies use in that case. So if this swamp is teething with this miasma and Metal Tyrannomon is sort of exuding it, then like it, it makes sense then that this is the path the enemies take so ogremon wasn't lying to them go figure yeah take that yamato <laughs> um hold on let me just get some water here uh, okay so uh koshiro's laptop then gets a warning um telling them to get out of there immediately um it like he like it comes up in english warning particles unknown dark mist be aware or something to that effect i'll put a i'll have a screenshot of it on screen now anyway but um tentamon then thinks maybe they shouldn't get too close joe suggests try throwing something into the the swamp to test so mimi reaches into Joe's bag and throws in his exam prep book. <laughs> and I was like, Mimi! I was just... And Joe doesn't even realize it at first until after, like, the thing immediately disintegrates. He's like, wait a minute, was that my exam prep book? No! And again, just funny. Uh, sorry, so... Yeah, so one thing I do like is the interaction between the characters because there isn't a whole lot but they they do a lot of good with the interactions that they do have um so Gabumon laments that the information was correct but the situation is too dangerous so uh, they need to find another way we go back to the fight and metal tyrannomon has let off another laser uh lightning attack taichi and greymon are behind a large rock and i'm left thinking the convenience of these hiding rocks is getting ridiculous. Like, how many episodes have we had now where, um, you know, they, the, the character in question has been able to avoid being blasted to smithereens because they found a convenient hidey rock? I'm not, um, I'm not the biggest fan of the idea. Now and then it's fine, but it just, it's a bit too convenient getting. And apologies, I suddenly couldn't read my own notes and then I got thrown off by everything. So let's uh, let's try that again. Uh, so we flash back to Koshiro telling Taichi about the gaps in Metal Tyrannomon's attack patterns. They try and counterattack, but they get smacked away. Thankfully, it's not tough enough for Greymon to de-digivolve this time. Then um, they make it under Metal Tyrannomon's legs and start blasting him from behind with Mega Flames. But when they try and jump at Metal Tyrannomon's back, Metal Tyrannomon tries to tail whip them, but Greymon holds onto the tail and manages to flip himself up onto Metal Tyrannomon's body and runs up it to try and stop it launching more missiles. Uh, yeah, this whole sequence is weird, like... So he lunges at Metal Tyrannomon, uh, tries to plug the hole, I guess, where the missiles would be coming out of its hand. But what happens is Greymon ends up just being on the other end of the missile and uh, gets thrown about the air and he's doing loop-de-loops and barrel rolls. and He's just uh, 
you know, and then eventually it, he just crashes into a tree near the miasma. So it's an, it's some interesting tactics here. Like I am noticing this Greymon seems to be a lot more agile and a lot stronger than the original one. Um, you know, I think they've just I think they've just sort of looked at what limits the monster and went, nah. <laughs> um, because that was one of the things I love about Geo Greymon in season five. Like he was like he was a buffer, faster version of Greymon, and uh, they seem to have just taken that idea and ran with it for this version of the original monster. So. I'm okay with that, I, I, and I do think it adds more to the battles, seeing Greymon, like, charging and doing tail whips and leaping into the air. Like, I half expect him to be doing that Godzilla um, dropkick <laughs> at one point. I just half expect that Godzilla flying dropkick at one point from Greymon, and I won't lie, I would mark the f*** out. I would mark out if that happens. So, yeah. Anyway... So, where yeah, so he crashes into a tree, and we cut to the others, and like, oh my god, something fell, ah, it's Greymon, and then we just see Metal Tyrannomon charging toward the others, I'm like, oh, um, but he seems to do like a spin of his tail to make like a, a, a circle of miasma, and I don't know if he's blocking the others from getting in, um, because... It's not explained all that well. Like, we see him charging, and Sora goes, oh no. And then, like, he spins in a circle, um, but a lot of the trees seem to have fallen. And I don't know if it's to imply that they've been poisoned by the miasma, or I need to watch that interaction again. But it doesn't seem to have any immediate effect on the others. But they're watching this, um, so, um, they're watching this all play out now, and there's no attempt made to have, like, Birdramon or Kabuterimon get involved, you know, like, the the ones that can fly. So, it's it's just, it's a bit random, although, to be fair, having a Metal Tyrannomon uh, charge at you, even seeing that on screen and getting it from the character's perspective, that's f***ing terrifying. Terrifying! Anyway, um... So... Metal Tyrannomon then stalks over Tai Chi and Greymon, and it's oh, it's such a good shot. Um, I don't know if I'm going to end up using that shot as the thumbnail or the one of Metal Greymon that comes up in a bit, but it's such a it just it's chilling, you know. It's 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 really scary and it really fits the tone of this version of the show, um, which has taken as as I've said before, this this version has taken a much more feral and much more uh, dog eat dog um, take on the idea of the digital world and these sentient roaming beasts, you know, that can shoot missiles and fire and sort of taken that up to its most extreme um, path, I, I, I suppose. Um, you know, it, it, uh, outcome is probably a better word. It's probably looked at this and gone, no this monster that can shoot lasers and missiles would do this. And I think it's, I just think it's really cool. Um, but the, the duo get moving, dodging the lasers again and, bla uh, and this time blasting the missiles. Uh, Metal Tyrannomon tr tries smashing down uh, with, with both of his claws. So like, um, God, what's, what's the wrestling term for that move? Not a sledgehammer. Is that a sledgehammer? Where you, you know, well, maybe you don't. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm speaking to a, uh, maybe I'm speaking to an educated few. Um, where you would clasp both your hands and raise it. It's like a, like a clubbing sort of, I think, but I think it's got an actual hammer name. I, I'm not sure if it's a sledgehammer or what, but that sort of thing where you would, it's, but it's that sort of movement anyway. But, Greymon has managed to slide between the two claws and grabs onto one of them. Um, tai Chi and Greymon then promise to never give up and uh, Greymon evolves while suplexing Metal Tyrannomon. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> so Metal Tyrannomon does this swinging club thing with its claws, right? 
Greymon has slid between the two claws, right? So the attack has clearly missed. He grabs on and starts lifting Metal Tyrannomon up into the air and then starts glowing for evolution as this um, hip toss suplex judo flip thing is in progress. I'm just like, ah, oh, Greymon strong. <laughs> You know, Gray, Gray, Graymon Smash. That's so good. It's so stupid, though. I think that's that's a lot of just what makes it so... It's unabashedly unashamed to just go to go hog wild. And I, that's what I kind of love about this version of Greymon compared to the other one. Um, I, I think I might actually prefer this version of Greymon over the original. I've probably lost or I've probably had to revoke had my Digimon privileges revoked by the fan base for saying that but um as as hit and miss as I am on the idea of this episode happening at all this early it's also proof that like these these writers and animators have so much more free reign and are so much more imaginative um that you just can't help but love what's uh, what's being presented um so, so cool um metal tyrannomon gets suplexed i guess by the power of evolution and um graymon evolves into metal graymon and there's some really good camera work um with the evolution it's not it's not stock footage um but it's also not complete body horror i actually think the Greymon to Metal Greymon evolution in the t in the opening titles is is better than the the evolution we got in the episode. Um, maybe it's a maybe it maybe it's a lockdown thing. Maybe it's a, a a time restriction. I don't know, but I really feel like where the Agumon to Greymon evolution in episode one was just complete abject body horror this should have been similar and more in line with what was presented in the opening theme but it's still it's still pretty good particularly that camera angle that it finishes on um and you you really get a scale and size of just how massive Greymon has become as metal Greymon um so I can't fault it too much, but I just think they because it's not stock footage, they should have just gone more more um more in on it than they did. Um Yeah, I guess that's really all I can say about it. Without it sounding like I'm burying it completely. Which I'm not. Um the new insert song though, I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. Getting a new insert song so soon. Um I mean, I know Tamers did it, and I know other shows have done it, where the 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 child to adult level gets one insert song, and the adult to perfect gets another, and the likelihood is, uh, perfect to ultimate will probably get another one. I just, I I just think it's too soon because we're, we're still only ten episodes in. I just still feel like it's too soon for a new opening theme or a new insert theme um again i know tamers and other shows have done it hell cross wars you got a new evolution song every time a new evolution showed up um effectively from we are cross heart to um soaring uh what god what's it called soaring warrior a soaring hero of the sky cross five to cross 4b the guardian um we are cross heart uh the x7 version you know like it's done this but 10 episodes in is just a bit much for a new insert if you're asking me and i'm not sure how i feel about it yet so it's a good thing we're in the arc now where everyone's going to be getting their perfects so i can listen to it a bit more i suppose <laughs> i don't want to dunk on the song it's new it's not as catchy as be the winners i'll give it that Although it does explain why they played "Be the Winners" so early in the episode, I it just it's like anything, you know. It'll take getting used to, and when I've heard it a few times, I'll make some proper comments on it. I don't want to dunk on it after hearing only a minute and a half of it, surrounded by 
uh, monsters and chi children screaming in the background. So it's not fair on the song. So I'll wait till I've heard it a few more times and I'll give um, an opinion on it then. Um, so Metal Tyrannomon fires more missiles. Uh, Metal Greymon cuts them out of the sky with his giant metal claw. He then fires that trident arm into Metal Tyrannomon's laser hand. So Metal Tyrannomon says, right, enough of this, tries to fire off more missiles. But then <laughs> Metal Greymon bites down on the missile hand. I'm just like, oh, oh, okay. Um, and then throw uses the uses the momentum um from biting down on the missile hand to toss metal tyrannomon into the air and then tail whips him into the miasma um metal tyrannomon then rises up out of the miasma um like a goddamn terminator and unhooks all of its cables which seem to act like power inhibitors <laughs> And then it just starts firing a billion lasers from out of all these unhooked cables that have detached from its body. Um, metal Greymon blocks the lasers with the with the with the with the big metal trident arm, and then teleports into the sky, and launches what he refers to as Giga Storm, which I guess is like a golden laser version of the Giga Destroyer. the The Giga Destroyer would be his regular attack where the chest plate opens up and uh, it, missiles fire out of its chest and missiles that look not too dissimilar to the missiles metal tyrannomons firing by the way but this just builds up like um like a big energy source and it's just i'm a fire in my laser and metal tyrannomon explodes and his data disappears and I, I, i'm just like is that the first time we've seen a Digimon's information get uh, get reconfigured in this show? I mean, no egg shows up where the Digimon used to be, but he, he burst into data and disappeared. Like, not even Ogremon got that. <sighs> because even... Like, just thinking back on the episode so far, the Tankmon that were fought on the beach, they were just left in wreckage and rubble. With the tire tracks spinning. Um, you know. Um, the squid. Digimon. Um, oh god. I'm terrible with names right now. The squid Digimon. That they fought in Joe's episode. Um, hold on. I need to go look that up. Anyway yeah. The squid Digimon that they fought in uh, Joe's episode. I mean that just seemed to get blasted back to the bottom of the ocean. Um, yeah, we, we haven't really seen anything disintegrate so far. Even Dromojimon, like, it's, it's horn got bust, or it's drill horn thing got busted up, but it didn't die, seemingly. So this is new. <laughs> um, but anyway, so Metal Greymon de-digivolves all the way back down to Agumon, and, uh, he and Taichi like embrace, and Agumon hopes that Ogremon was watching, and I'm just like, oh <laughs> no, oh, no. Um, so the group have to split up, and I'm like, do they? Did the group really have to split up already? But it's the it's the only conclusion they've come to because they can't go straight through to the enemy HQ because of the the miasma. So they have to split up if they want to proceed as there's not enough information to know whether going left around the miasma or going right around the miasma will yield the best result. And Yamato agrees with this, telling Joe that the current situation doesn't allow the idea of either the left or right routes being a dead end to even be considered as an option for them. And at least by splitting up they can avoid being wiped out completely if something happens to the other side and joe's like something what do you mean something and go on something you know something is something uh the digimon then ask how they're going to split up mimi suggests drawing names and asks to borrow joe's notebook to uh to make it up real quick and uh 
the episode kind of ends. And it's kind of, oh. Oh, okay. Huh. Like, it ends on them laughing, which, I guess, happy ending, and Ogremon was avenged, I, I guess, um, and we have a new evolution. Still way too early, if you ask me, but we have a new evolution all the same. Uh, yeah, it was kind of okay. I mean... Like, I don't know if it accomplished what it set out to do. And I don't know if personally I'd have had them going to perfect level this soon. Because the the the, the preview for next week just outright shows where Gururumon. And we know from the episode titles that, you know, we went over in the last episode that after after where Gururumon, we're going to get Lilimon, and then we're going to get Garudamon, and then we're going to get uh, Atler Kabuterimon. And then presumably for episode 15, we're going to have uh, Zudomon. So... For what it tried to do, or what it set out to do, I guess... It, uh... I guess it worked. Like, I'm going to be honest. I don't know how I feel about this episode. I really don't. Um, it just kind of happened. You know, it's... Um, I, I suppose I'll... Plot... Hmm. Character-wise, like, the character interactions were really good. There was one... A uh, piece of character interaction I didn't mention. Um, and that was when it looked like Ty and Matt were going to come to blows. Joe is sort of whispering to the others, um, do I get involved here? Like, I'm the oldest. Sh I, should I try and separate this? You know, and and jo and Gomamon's like, mm, I don't know. And Mimi's like, please, I can't stand the tension. Please break this up. And... Going from that, then, to having the tension lift when Agumon gets hungry. And Mimi then teasing Joe by literally book burning. And then, you know, stealing his notebook to um, do up the name drawings. There was some good interaction between Mimi and Joe. Sora being a sort of a neutral voice of reason between Taichi and Yamato's um, contrasting or conflicting personalities was really nice. Um, we're not seeing anything from Koshiro and Joe yet. So I'm kind of okay with that because I was very worried that they were going to do a whole thing about uh, Joe being jealous of Koshiro being so smart at, for such a young age. Where he's struck, where Joe is struggling with his studies and you know for med school and things like that. So the minimum interaction between Koshiro and Joe has been nice, um, and the interactions between Joe and Mimi this episode certainly don't take away from that, but they have added a bit of brevity to an episode that is mostly very serious. Um, again, between Taichi and Yamato's. Um, conflicting personalities and ways of going about things to um, Taichi and Agumon basically being out for revenge for Ogremon you know but also needing you know but that also isn't the biggest factor of the episode like it's okay we need to do this and you know we can um put Ogremon to rest or he can rest easy or peacefully I you know I guess is sort of one way of looking at it it's hard to talk about the souls of digital monsters but you know that sort of look we've done this he can rest easy and that whole thing of I hope Ogremon was watching um from the Digimon afterlife I guess was very cute and very sweet and just oh my heart um but it didn't overtake the episode um, or the ambition 
of the two in helping the others get to safety while they sort of settle the score with Ogre, with Ogremont, with um, Metal Tyrannomon. So there was a couple of different um, interactions and personalities at play and various different motivations for doing what they were doing. And I really appreciate that from a storytelling perspective. Um, and Metal Tyrannomon getting suplexed um, by the power of evolution is freaking hilarious to me. I, I That's probably my favorite part of the episode. <laughs> um, but I don't know. It was just kind of meh at the same time. Uh, for, I don't, and I, I, maybe that, maybe that's on me. I may, maybe that, that is, maybe that's on me. Maybe I thought, oh, you know, the, we're going into the perfect arc. Um, we're going to get some really good stories out of it. But I also think it has a lot to do with comparing it to the original show. Because we don't see Metal Greymon in the original show until after the Devi Monarch. And we and tie and there's this whole thing about collecting um crests which highlight an attribute that um resonates with that person the strongest. So the, the little crests that we've seen on the Digivices, courage, love, friendship, reliability, sincerity, uh, knowledge. Uh, we haven't seen hope and light yet. Um there was a whole thing about collecting these crests and activating the power within to help your partner achieve a uh, super evolution. And during that story, um, Ty goes off the deep end trying to activate his courage or find a way to get Agumon to evolve to perfect level because he feels it's the only way he's going to be able to protect everybody. And this goes horribly wrong, and Agumon, when he first hits perfect level, doesn't become Metal Greymon. He becomes Skull Greymon. Um, you know, and then Ty sort of has to learn a lesson um, in that, in how there's a difference between courageousness and recklessness, and, you know, um, Digimon aren't just tools and different things like that you know there's there's a whole lot of moral lessons and he's still pretty shaken up by the experience later on in the in the Edamon arc which is used as the breather arc before Vamnemon really for the kids to find these crests and learn more about themselves and maybe activate them as they go um but Taichi's doesn't activate, and we don't see Metal Greymon until the very end of the Edamon arc, when Edamon is destroyed. And then it's not until the Vamdemon arc that everybody hits their perfect level. And then uh, only Tai and Matt get to ultimate level. At the very end of the Vamdemon arc. Yeah, um... So, I think the part of the re so I I think a lot of that comes back to there's just not enough done. You know, this tie is a lot more grounded and a lot more tactical than his predecessor. I don't think anyone can argue against that, and I've said that before. This Tai Chi is a lot more, maybe not pragmatic, but he's definitely a lot more grounded and a lot more tactical than his counterpart. And you know, wanting to keep the others safe and get wanting to shake Metal Tyrannomon off their tail and understanding that look, if we don't get rid of him, we're not going to be able to proceed at all. I think is really admirable. But I don't think they should be doing perfect levels this early, and I think that's going to be a gripe I have um for the next five episodes. Hopefully I'm proven wrong. I want to be proven wrong. Look, I was I'm I'm fully willing to admit I've been wrong about this show so far and it being a cheap beat for beat cash grab uh rehash of the original show. It has certainly proven itself to be anything but that. 
But I don't want to be coming out here every week and making these same points again and again and again. And I, I feel like I've, I've been doing that recently. And I just want the show to earn it. I don't think we've done anything character-wise or morality-wise or anything. I don't think we've earned perfect levels yet. Except for the fact that there's 66 episodes to this and allegedly... And I guess they're getting all of this out of the way now so that they can, they don't have to use it as time fillers later on. I don't really know. Um, you know, and maybe, and, by the t and who knows? I mean, we're 10 episodes in, in 56 weeks time. God, we're going to be doing this for, for a year and a bit. Wow. What, six weeks from now is, what is six weeks from now? We're in, we're on, we're, today is currently the 9th of August. So one, two, three is the 30th of August. Four, five, six weeks from now is the 20th of September. We are potentially going to be talking about this show until September 2021. Yowie wowie. <laughs> in perspective, and who knows, by that stage... Um, the show could have well earned um, what it's doing now. It could make sense in the grander scheme of context, but I just don't like it being used as a story beat this early. And, and that's on me, I think. And I, I don't know where they're going with this. Um, and I can't predict it at this stage. But what I can say is that in the overall context of the episode itself, if I leave aside the idea of what has been earned and what hasn't, and I just take the episode at face value, it was a good episode. The evolution made sense in context, the need to help everyone else and shake off Metal Tyrannomon, needing something on par with Metal Tyrannomon to get rid of it, that idea is really good, but the episode still feels lacking. And I don't know what it is that I just... There's just something that just doesn't sit right with the pacing of the episode that I can only rank it a, a 3.5. It's not a middle-of-the-road episode, it's just above. But, but in saying that, I don't know what I was expecting going in that I'm giving these arbitrary ratings. Um, I don't know what else the episode could have done to impress me more. Um, like, the whole thing couldn't have been a fighting episode. I get that. It's not going to be the Ogre Mon episode. But again, and seeing the kids try to be a bit tactical about it and try and work out the different routes on where to go... Um, Yamato not trusting Ogremon's information because he was an antagonist to the group. I totally get that, and I totally, as much as, as much as Yamato was a dick, I got where he was coming from with it. But the episode just feels, it just feels like something's missing. Just, just to push it over the edge and, and have it be a great episode rather than Nah, it's fine. But I, but <laughs> put a mega blaster to my head, and I, I couldn't tell you what that is. So I don't, I don't know what I'm looking for. But the episode didn't, as cool as the suplex was. I'm not marking an episode of four or five for, a, for a suplex. Um. But I don't know what else I was looking for. So I'm in a very, I'm at a crossroads here. Because I know I should like this episode more. I know I should, but I don't. It's just middling. And I think for the first episode of a new evolution arc, I just kind of hope that doesn't set the tone. And maybe that's all it is. Maybe I'm just hoping that this episode being middling isn't going to set the tone for everybody else's evolutions. And like I said already, I want to be proven wrong. The show has proven me wrong before, um, so I've 
I'm I have full confidence it'll do it again, but I'm also very I'm not up eh, yeah, no, I'm not optimistic at the same time. I'm not going I'm erring on the side of caution here. Yeah. Okay. So I think that'll wrap it up for now. Thank you very much for joining in. Let me know your thoughts on the episode down below. Do you think maybe I'm being too harsh on it? Um, what are your opinions on the episode as a whole? Is the um, Do you see something in it I'm, I'm not seeing? Um, by all means, let me know. Uh, again, in the comments down below, that would be absolutely fantastic. But I will see you later on in the week for more episodes of the podcast we will be taking a look at some thing very special that's on the way to me i'll never do that again rule one i lie um <laughs> no so i'll see you guys later on in the week for something pretty cool following on from something we did last week gee i wonder what that could be and uh and then next week, we are going to be in the desert fighting Scorpiomon, and where Gururumon is going to make his debut. So that'll be interesting. If it ends up being a better episode than this, I'll be shocked. But I guess only time will tell. Unless someone's been to the future already and seen the episode, they can let me know. That'd be great. <laughs> Alrighty. I'm just rambling here. I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, please do hit that thumbs up button. Hitting the like button helps out the channel. Uh, subscribe if you're new here for more Digimon related content. And uh, hit the join button. Become a member. Get a badge. Become a badge buddy. And help the channel grow. Do take care. Stay safe. Be excellent to each other. And have yourselves a... A fantastic week ahead. Take care and bye-bye.